Have you ever been scrolling through Instagram, Twitter, or any social media app and thinking to yourself, how is this graphic made? This is a new sports Photoshop series where I take professional team social media pages and tell you exactly how it was made. Alright, the first step to any graphic is to find a high quality image. So I typically use Google for my images and I go to image and then go to settings, scroll down to advanced search and then under image size, I'm only looking for large images only. So usually I search for images that are above two or four MP and it goes all the way up to eight or 16. With any good sports graphic, the designer is gonna be using high quality images because then they can manipulate it and make it look as clear as possible. And what the Google search that you're doing does is it limits your selections to only the images that are larger in size and thus better quality. All right, this next part is just a cutout and mask your image. I sped this part up because it's pretty simple if you know what you're doing with the quick selection tool. Step two is to clean and sharpen. This is personal preference, but I do like to reduce the noise with all of my images. This is my preset that I use, and you guys can stop the video here and look at it. You can do this by going to filter, noise, and then reduce noise. After I reduced the noise, I took my image to camera raw filter. I increased my texture and clarity. I added vibrance, made some small adjustments to highlights and shadows, and you can then see the before and after on the camera raw filter. So if you look at the Nick's post here, you can see there's darker spots on his arms as well as the jersey. So if you're trying to duplicate those dark spots that the Nick's graphic has, what you can do is you can find the dark spots within your photo and Photoshop can actually do that for you. So all you have to do is double click on your image and then slide the left slider to the right under the blending options menu. So if you take a look at my design, you can see that the tattoos, the beard, and parts of his hair are all the darkest portions of the player. So I create a levels adjustment and I change the blend mode to multiply and then I painted back on those areas where I knew that those areas were the darkest parts of my photo. Just a quick reminder here, if this video gets 100 likes, I will release the PSD for you guys to have for free, no charge at all. All you gotta do is like the video. The actual process of darkening the tattoos took a while because I had to go over each part of his tattoos individually, but you can see the before and the after and how subtle the effect looks, but it really increases the quality of your graphic. All right, step four, we're gonna go over the background design. So we're looking to make that line that goes through the middle of the next graphic. All right, first make a rectangle and then we are going to rotate it so that it covers half the screen. And this is what creates that split down the line effect. Now we are going to fill the background with a different color. So this can be done by going up to edit, fill, and then select whatever color you would like. Also, you can see a bit of texture on the color layers. So I'll do my best to duplicate this as much as possible. So I'm going to be using a grunge package that I most recently bought. And what it's going to do is really give me some texture on the rectangles as well as the fill background that we just did. If the effect is too strong, you can always lower the opacity so that the texture isn't showing as much. All right, the fifth step is to add text and logos. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna be completely replicating how the Knicks made their design. And so I made a square in between and I pressed control and then clicked on my square and then I went to distort and I moved the middle slider to the left to create that same shape. This is a brand new video series that I'm trying out. So if you guys are enjoying this video right here, please leave me a like so I know to do more videos like this. All right, so the next thing I did was add a small shadow to the logos. You can see that the social media posts by the Knicks they have a small black shadow around the logos. So let me show you how that was done. All right, so with your logo layer selected, you're gonna hit the effect button on the bottom right hand corner, and we are gonna add a drop shadow. So I wanted a subtle effect, so I decreased the opacity. If you change the distance, is this is just how far away the shadow is to the logo, and if you increase the size, it's just the, uh, the amount of shadow that you actually have. The font that I'm using 
for behind the player is go bold thin i also use this font for the uh, game day on the side as well as the time for the game to start all right step six is color correction so i added a black shadow around the outside to give the graphic a little bit of depth the first color adjustment that i made was vibrance i added some vibrance and realized that you know i could just crank it all the way up and it would look much better so here's the before and then the after so you can see how much of a difference vibrance makes and it really makes your colors pop the next adjustment that i made was to add the color lookup three strip three strip really impacts the reds in your image and so it really impacts the player's skin as well as the red in the background if the effect is too strong for you you can always lower the opacity so this is the before and then the after of those three color corrections that i just made so you can see how much of a difference color correction makes on your graphic so it's definitely something that you want to input on your graphic feel free to leave me a question in the comments and i will answer you as soon as i can and this is the final result